Come with us now as we take you on a journey from the heart of New South Wales through the Hunter Valley to the beautiful beaches of the Central Coast. Over four episodes, we'll be exploring the iconic and rugged landscapes on offer from Dubbo to Nelson Bay and all the other surprises in between. So pack your bags and climb on board with us as we take you on the ultimate bush to beach adventure. G'day and welcome to the show. Today is our second episode of our four-part journey from Dubbo right through to Nelson Bay. And it's all been thanks to our great mates at Galaxy Caravans, Lotus Caravans and of course GNS Chassis. So sit back and relax as we show you What's, what's up, up Down, down under. under. Picking up from where we left off last week, we find ourselves in the beautiful New South Wales town of Mudgee. But before we head off in search of more adventure in this amazing part of the world, we're going to go for one last cruise around this lovely little town. We have walked around Mudgee, we've driven around Mudgee, and we've even flown over the top of Mudgee, but Tanya still wants to see more and has found an interesting way to do it. Maka, this is Nick from Mudgee Trikes, and he's going to take us for a spin in this little chariot. What are we going to see, Nick? We're going to check out a few old historic buildings and just what our wonderful town's got to offer. Well, why don't we get into it? Let's do it. Nick from Mudgee Trikes come and picked us up to give us a cruise around um, Mudgee and have a look around the place. And what a top way to see the town. Mudgee Trike Tour was fantastic. I can just imagine if you're a visitor to the town and you wanted to see, you know, as much as you could in just a short time, um, a great way to see the wineries and, and do a bit of a tour without having to worry about drinking and driving. And uh, you get to see all the highlights of the town. But he knows all the local spots to go because he is a local. So you could drive around all day trying to find the places and might find half of them, but Nick knows the spots. I don't know about you, Macca, but I'm bikey converted. I just have love today. It's been fantastic. But where are we now? This is such a beautiful park. Tanya at Lawson Park. It's a great place to go for a walk, bring the kids, feed the ducks. Yep, just magnificent. Perfect time of the year to be here too. Yes. Yeah. Nick, for everyone at home, if they want to come out and have a ride with you and have the fun we've just had this afternoon, how do they get in touch with you, mate? They can find us on Facebook, Mudgy Trikes, or look us up, uh, mudgytrikes.com.au. Absolutely perfect. And on that note, I'm going to grab me budgie and get out of Mudgy. <laughs> and just like that, we're off on the next leg of our adventure. And this time, we are really going to put these off-road vans to the test. Just over an hour and a half east of Mudgee and well off the beaten track, we stumbled across the Boylong Creek 4x4 park, where I caught up with Bruce to find out more about the place. Well, we arrived at Boylong Creek 4x4 and I've already had half an adventure coming into this point of the park, where I've caught up with Bruce, the owner. Bruce, what an amazing place, mate. Thanks for having us. Mate, it's a pleasure having us here. Mate, what can you tell me about the property? It's 800 acres. It's surrounded by the local Wollamai National Park and uh, close to Sydney and Newcastle. So what inspired you to set it up as a football drive park? It was just wanting to provide something for the punters that had nowhere to go to. We get everything from young family groups with, again, allowing kiddies to have somewhere to climb rocks and ride the mini bikes. We have professional rock crawlers, just people that need a few acres to come out and do something without being told not to do this and not to do that. They've lost that generational connection with the bush and they can come up here and they've got it and they can experience it. Just sitting around the fire roasting the marshmallows and, and all those things I guess that generations past took for granted. So many come up here and they're just amazed that they can see the stars and we're here for the punters. What's the options for camping when they get here? Mainly just campsites. Uh, we've got uh, caravan access in. Again, just normal camping. Got some toilets for them and stuff like that? Great modern port loos and uh, again, it just makes it more hygienic for the youngsters and the ladies. So where can we go and where can't we go in the park? Within the bounds of the escarpments. You've got the whole property to yourselves. Really? The rules and regulations have disappeared? It's the fun we used to have years ago. I want to go and get in amongst it. And with that being said, Sal from GNS and I got stuck right into the tracks of Bylong Creek. How are you finding the drive, Sal? Interesting tracks. Yeah, the tracks are pretty interesting here. Yeah, we come into a bit of a, a creek crossing, not much water, but it's pretty wet. Um, everything's handling really good and uh, it's been really great. 
Mate, you guys have obviously spent a lot of time developing this suspension. Mate, what's the uh, what's the secret to designing a set of suspension that's going to carry a big caravan like this through these tracks that were actually built more for uh, four-wheel driving than pulling big touring vans through? Well, basically, it's about actually going out there yourself and... Experiencing the terrain, see what the suspension does, what it needs. If it needs more travel, less travel. If springs need to be longer, shorter, softer, harder. And this is what us guys at GNS do. We actually go out ourselves and test things and uh, try everything ourselves before we put it out on the market. Control Rider does an amazing job underneath the Lotus and the Galaxy and uh, hasn't let us down. I'd have seen what uh, you blokes do with caravans in the bush. You take things to places that the average person will never go to, so I guess that gives the uh, the end user the peace of mind that whatever they've got under their caravan, if you guys have built it, it's been built through the uh, planning, preparation, design and testing that's going to give them the peace of mind to take it where they want to go. Correct. We, um, we, before we put anything out on the market, we... We try our best to design it and proof test it as best as we can. Hey, what do you reckon about this for a drive? Just the scenery and whatever, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? This campsite's amazing. It's got such beautiful tracks. A um, lot of nice landscape. The tracks are designed in a way that um, you've got areas where you can turn around and come back. Um, doesn't really trap you in anywhere. And uh, But you also got some areas where it really puts your vehicles and your, your caravans and suspensions and chassis to the test and guess what they're really passing the test today all right mate i reckon it's about that time of the day that we should start looking for somewhere to pull up for the night what do you reckon yes, I reckon we should look for somewhere where we can camp tonight let's go for a mecca let's keep looking for a good spot where we can camp Sorry that, mate i'm following you lead me to paradise old mate hey mate you got a Coming up after the break, not everything goes according to plan. This episode of What's Up Down Under is proudly brought to you by our great mates at Lotus Caravans. To find out all about their extensive range of great caravans, just head to lotuscaravans.com.au. You can plan until you're blue in the face. You can work out exactly what you're going to do to a place. One thing you cannot control is the weather. And the weather came and touched us right there at Bylong Creek. Started raining in the afternoon. We're about halfway to the campsite we'd planned to be to. And didn't it change up the ante? My goodness. Traction. That's what you need. Doesn't matter how much horsepower you're building. If you haven't got traction, you ain't going nowhere. Now, this is basalt country. Clay. When it rains, it gets greasy, real greasy. We've got about three tonne of caravan behind us and we're trying to drive up over hills, so we ain't got no traction. We've got to drop some tyre pressures down, gives us a bigger footprint on the ground, more traction, better chance of success. We will get through this. Watch closely. We just encountered about 30 mil of rain, a bit wet, swampy here in the area, very wet on the surface. It's become like soap. So we've decided to take some pressure out of the tyres see if we can go up. We've been slipping and sliding a bit trying to get up, but I've just put these down to 25 psi. Now I'm going to be doing the other side. So I just let down the tyre pressure a little bit. Just looking at the wall bubbling up a little bit gives you an indication roughly that you're there at the right pressures and then you just check them with a the gauge. Just got to watch if you slide back, you don't jackknife the caravan. Just try and keep yourself steady, don't use the brake too much try and let the car control the van where it wants to go and use your acceleration. We found a nice little campsite, it's up over the top of this hill. When we first discovered it, it hadn't rained. It's raining now and the track is greasy. Sal's just been through and uh, had to take a little shortcut around the hill because he just couldn't find enough bite there to get everything over the top. But I've got something in mind, I want to give it a go. Let's have a go. Come on, jump in. And while I tried to get up over the hill, Tanya had a chat to Mark from GNS. So Mark, on our way to camp, just a little question I have is when people take delivery of their vans, what should they do first? Good idea is to read their owner's handbook. Mm -hmm. Gives you information about the warranty, gives you information about um, a shakedown test. What's a shakedown test? Oh, that's uh, take 
take a trip 300 kilometers, give it a good workout, mm -hmm. and then when you get home, check everything. Make sure there's nothing loose, and also make sure your, your wheel nuts are tight, make sure your bolts are tight, make sure your, sus your suspension is good and strong still, and just make sure that everything is there so that when you go on a proper trip, you don't have anything unexpected happen. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes a whole lot of sense to me. Just read your manuals, make sure you know your van pretty intimately, and then you can head off and really enjoy your trip. Absolutely. Well, let's go and enjoy our trip. Let's get down to base camp and light a fire and uh, relax for the afternoon. Looking forward to that. Well, there you go. We made it up over the hill. No problems at all. Put it in four-wheel drive, put the diff locks in, put everything in, let some wind out of the tyres. But today, still not enough. We needed one more thing, and fortunately we had it on hand today. It's called a Unimog, <laughs> ex-military vehicle, hooked on, pulled us through, and we can still get to the campsite we wanted to get to. You should keep it in mind, but if you get out into a spot like this and you're not prepared for it, you end up with the um, that situation, you haven't got the gear to get yourself out, you're going to be there for quite some time, which is less than ideal. Just setting up, as it's raining, it gets uh, some shelter happening. We'll light the fire and... Uh, Maybe we can have a good afternoon here or evening and stay the night. Oh, we've arrived. It was fantastic. How great do these vans look with a bit of mud on them? Now that's what I'm talking about. They're off-road vans and that's exactly what we did. We went off-road. And while we set up camp for the night, why don't you folks at home check out this piece on GNS chassis. Mark, when someone mentions chassis in the caravan industry in Australia, the name GNS pops up straight away. What is it that makes GNS the name that people go to for chassis in caravans today? Well, Mecca, they've been in business for over 40 years now, and the focus has always been on the customer. Everything that we do is geared towards making sure that we meet our customers' expectations, at least making sure our chassis are safe, making sure they fit for purpose, and also remembering that it's not just the caravan builder who's buying the chassis from us, but we've got to make sure that the owner of the caravan is just as happy. I guess they are ultimately your customer. The people you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are the manufacturers of these caravans. So you've got that dual responsibility, haven't you? That's correct. That's correct. You know, we start the process pretty early. Um, we, we, we go right from the design phase through to testing, through to making sure all the materials that uh, we use and the components that we use are the best around. Um, our manufacturing technology, our manufacturing systems, our workforce is highly skilled, and it, all, it goes all the way through to your customer service and your after-sales care. We never stop dealing with the customer. So we're going from the design and it never ends. So really, you've gone through everything with a fine tooth comb, You've done all the worrying, all the planning, all the preparation and manufactured something that the end user no longer has to worry about. Exactly. Like I said before, making sure that it's safe, making sure that it's durable, making sure that it's, it's going to be going nice and straight when you're tying your caravan, that's all part of it. So in a nutshell, mate, what is it that makes GNS the top of the food chain? Ultimately, it's our loyal customer base. You know, we try and look after them as much as they look after us. And if someone at home wants some more information about chassis, where can they find that? Oh, that's easy. gnschassis.com.au Coming up after the break, Tanya and I cook up another one-port wonder on the Galaxy Nemesis. This episode of What's Up Down Under is brought to you by our mates at GNS Chassis. To find out more, head to gnschassis.com.au and make sure you buy a caravan with a GNS chassis. What's Up Down Under have teamed up with the Caravan Industry Association of Victoria, Go Make Some Memories and New Age Caravans to help you get your gecko on. New Age Caravans are giving you the chance to win a brand new Gecko Caravan valued at over $50,000. The Gecko from New Age has a lightweight and compact design, which means you can still enjoy all the comforts on the road without taking up too much space. The Gecko features the tough Elko Enduro suspension, external speakers, 15-inch alloy wheels and plenty more so that you can travel in comfort anywhere. Win the Caravan and our mates at Camac are also giving away a $1,000 gift voucher. There are also plenty of monthly prizes to be won, including including six $500 Kamek vouchers and six Family Parks vouchers valued at over $150 each. You can enter every day of the competition and all you have to do is log on to whatsupdownunder.com.au. 
Click on our competitions page and follow the prompts. So get your new age gecko on and go make some memories. Enter now. Well, Tanya asked me to come over for breakfast this morning and bring everything with me. Now, to her, breakfast is Greek-style yoghurt and muesli. Now, to me, <laughs> Greek-style yoghurt and muesli is something that you don't feed to humans for breakfast because it doesn't contain traces of bacon. <laughs> so, today we... <laughs> How are you, Tanya? I'm good, Macca. Good morning to you. Good morning to um, you. Are you ready for brekkie? I sure am. I'll tell you what I've come up with here. We're at Boilong Creek, so I reckon I've come up with a dish called Boilong Creek Hash Brown. Now, it's pretty straightforward and I've done a fair bit of the preparation early because that's what you do on telly when you're cooking. Here's one we prepared earlier. <laughs> so I've prepared some butter earlier. Okay, so now we're going to put in some onion. We'll put some onion in there with the butter. You want to um, pass me the bacon, bacon. please? Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, how great is this Bylon Creek um, it is four wheel drive track? It's been awesome staying here. Top spot. A little bit of rain last night. Mm. Didn't dampen our spirits. No, no, no. How'd you have a uh, good night in the galaxy? Yeah, it's fantastic. I love the galaxy. Comfortable, what? got everything you want in there. But I was mostly impressed about getting here. You know, it's a robust van built for the rugged terrain. I tell you what, it absolutely nailed it coming in here. So what is it you love about the Galaxy? Oh, everything. It's just such a really good off-road van and uh, it's built tough. It's, um, it's comfortable inside, you know, and I think it's really important that you don't miss out on all those nice creature comforts of home, even though you're out here in the bush, you know, a million miles from anywhere. It's really good. I'll crack a little bit of pepper. Yeah, a bit of, bit of pepper. Wow, that's looking great. It it's smells looking... awesome. Mmm, bacon. It's time now for some grated potato. If you... Sprinkle it over. Yeah, 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 go for it. Mm. Move that around a little bit. All right, then. Stir. I'll give you a little bit of a stir and a move around. We want to get that a bit crispy, you know. There's nothing worse than raw potato. So what I'm going to do now is just make a few little gaps in here. Can you crack an egg in yep. the gap, please? Sure can. That's Are you ready stuff. for the cheese? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, where's the cheese? It, sprinkle it across. Oh, look at this coming oh, together, eh? Yeah. Now, if we make a little lid with the alfoil... Because we haven't got a proper lid for the pan out here. So we're going to improvise, as we do. So I reckon we leave that for about... Two minutes, maybe three, and then we'll be into it. Well, it's smelling pretty good. I think it's time to have a little look under the alfoil macker. The unveiling? Yes. We'll show us before we show them. Ooh, ooh. Oh, you're going to love this. Oh, did you see the steam come up? It's just like a cooking show, isn't it? And being a one pot wonder, you know, I love the fact that you can just cook it in the one pan on this little lucky here. It's fantastic. Do you reckon we just call it cooked and we just get into it? Or I think, we... yeah, I reckon so. You coming for brekkie? Coming up after the break, I get my motor running and head out on the highway to the Candos Motorcycle Museum. This episode of What's Up Down Under is brought to you by Galaxy Caravans. Get online at galaxycaravans.com.au and check out their great range of vans on offer. There are many caravan brands that are built on a GNS chassis, and GNS chassis want to support caravanners with a chance to win $5,000 or $5,000 off your next caravan purchase with a participating manufacturer. So, for information on how to enter and get 100 bonus entries, go to whatsupdownunder.com.au and click on our competitions page. Request the best with GNS. Thinking about selling your caravan? Log on to Caravan Camping Classifieds. With a fixed price of only $25 per listing and thousands of visits to the site each year, you're bound to say goodbye to your old van quicker than you think. There's great tips and hints and it's a no-fuss way of selling your van and you may even find your new van on Caravan Camping Classifieds. Just a short drive from Bailon Creek is a little town of Candos, and it happens to be home to one of the biggest private collections of Harley Davidson motorbikes. I'm going to go in and have a chat to Ken, so come on in with me. You know, Candos is just this little dot on a road map, but it has a fantastic Harley Davidson motorcycle museum. And uh, Ken and Vicky, who are the owners of the museum and all the uh, collection, uh, they're so proud of what they have there on display. So, have you always been a fan of Harley Davidsons? Oh, I've only since I was two. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. 
Even, t- even teens I had a passion for them and uh, I bought my first one with 21,000 miles on it. It's now got 521,000 miles on it and it's right behind us, that red one there. Uh, that was my introduction and, and it grew since from then. Uh, Have you got a favourite? Depends what sort of mood I'm in really. Uh, sometimes you feel like going 120 mile an hour so you feel like a fast bike. Other times you want to cruise. Different bikes for different days, yeah. yeah. And I was really stoked when um, Charlie and Ellie came in. Come over and say hello. What's your name? Ellie. Ellie, come over here. I'd love to have a hug. Aren't you beautiful? <laughs> Hello, darling. And who's this with you? Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Come on, is this your sister? Hello, Charlie. How are you going? There are little girls there that lived close to Candos and they follow country music. They just love the What's Up Down Under show. And they came in to say good day when they heard we were in town. And uh, Ellie was telling me that she rides a motorbike. I think she's like, you know, eight years old and she's got her own, own Yamaha motorbike. And, you know, she's a real little, an all Australian girl. So if we, were, if we had petrol in the engine and we were going to go off for a ride somewhere, where would we go? Sydney. And you think we'd ride over the Harbour Bridge? <laughs> and uh, we'd have to have a couple of helmets though, wouldn't we? Because the police might call us up. And then I reckon for lunch we'd have fish and chips. And then, and then we'd head across the hills a long way home and come all the way back to Candos. You think we'd make, make it back for school on Monday? We might be a bit late. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can really tell that uh, Vicky and Ken are, are really strong in their community and doing the right thing there. But a must see when you go to Candos. Well, that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thanks to our good mates at GNS Chassis, Galaxy Caravans, and of course, Lotus Caravan. Join us again next week, though, when we continue our journey from Dubbo right through to Nelson Bay, when we show you more of What's, what's up, up Down Under.